Hello Kev, Edward Tim Rally here. Uh, this is just a little video I wanted to do uh, just to help some people out who might be thinking about going for the rally license uh, in the UK. This will be obviously uh, so uh, the the uh, bars license, I think it's called. Um, that's sort of the test that you've got to do. So I obviously passed mine last week. Uh, so I just want to go through like the, the process. Um, so the way I did it, I went to Phil Price Rally School, which is in sort of mid Wales, mid to north Wales. Uh, probably from what I've read, this is the best school to go to. Uh, absolutely amazing day, phenomenal. Loads of time in the cars. Um, so I'll go, I'll go into, I'll tell you what, I'll go into a bit more detail rather than a bit. I'll go through. How I uh, got the pack. I think I actually got the pack from here. So, um, uh, MSM exam. So that's for the exam, uh, which I didn't do. So you click on this link. I presume this is going to take you probably to uh, this Motorsport UK where you get the license from. Yeah. So you have to order this like this pack first. When I got mine, which was about a little bit less than a year ago, it was something like that. Um, in that, you get uh, some prepaid envelopes and stuff that's got your application form in. Um, mine's filled out, ready to go. So take that with you, and your instructor will sign that off when you pass. Uh, some other information if you've got sort of difficulties. The uh, medical difficulties, I think that's for yeah. Uh, a little book, so something like that with just like information and stuff in. Um, so it gives you a little bit of info about rallying. Um, some other notes and an amazing DVD that's about four hundred years old. <laughs> you get two I think you get two two videos in it, like an introduction to rally driving which goes through some of the basics and stuff of what it's like when you do an event and like a first aid video which is just absolutely awful. It must be about twenty years old. Um but you've you've kinda gotta watch it, I must admit. Not much of what was in this D V D actually related to the test. If I remember right, yeah, but it's still worth. There's still information in there. It's still worth looking into. And a pen that probably doesn't work. Um, and a little mock card. So I imagine when I get my license back, uh, I'll get something like that. Um, so yeah, hundred and odd quid for a wanky DVD, a cheap pen, and uh, some forms. So um, yeah, you take these forms with you and you book to whatever whatever you're going to do your bars test now your bars is like a, a, a fairy test that you've got to do and in all honesty it's dead easy um there's nothing to worry about at all uh, i'll I, I watched a couple of videos there's a, a channel i forget the name off the top of my head but it's uh, these guys who are building a mini uh, um, as part of their series, they go and do the bars test, and it he does a video of them revising some of the questions, and I watched that a couple of times, and most of the questions that were in that video was on the test. So I got like two hours tu tuition before I'd done the actual test, but I pr probably could have just gone in and done it and and passed it straight away. There was I think every question I already knew beforehand. Um, so, but this is how I done it. But I would recommend. Obviously, it depends where you are in the country. There's different places that do it, like Sil Silverstone, and there'll be a list somewhere of the places you can can go to actually go for your bars test. But I would highly recommend doing this, and I'd highly recommend doing the the full day as well. So get a get a full rally day in with it. Um, I think you can just book your book your test, but. Pff, why would you want to go all that way and uh, and not like sort of not do a proper day? Um, so 
it is expensive for the full day. I won't lie. Uh, what's that one day intense course? So as it stands now, I think that that's what I paid. Uh, 350 quid. Uh, and then you get a uh, 50 percent no you get a discount on your bars as well so i think maybe you'd only pay 40 quid for your bars or something so it's good it's going to cost you about 400 quid with the full rally day as well um but like i say absolutely a hundred percent worth it um so uh, explaining the day if you do go to phil price rally school you'll get there for like nine quarter past nine something like that uh, watch a couple of introduction videos so there'll be a load of people there who are just doing the rally experience i was the only one who was actually doing me me bars test while i was there uh, went with my daughter as well she was just there for the rally experience um, and they'll there's like a training loop that they've got like a bit of a figure of eight type thing and they, uh, they give you like two brews but with the rear diff locked and road tires on the back so they just they're just like really tail happy really fun to control um they take it out round the loop first and then you're sort of let loose to go and do it yourself i think you do like three or four laps e- each time um so you you're generally out on your own so they'll give you some tips it'll go around when it's back to your turn again you can go out on your own or if you want someone to go out with you, they'll go out with you as well uh, to give you pointers. But they'll, every now, every like third go or so, and they'll jump in with you again and give you a little bit more tuition. So they're, they're constantly watching how you're doing uh, and picking up on where you're going wrong and always giving you advice as well. So that's like the main day sort of focuses around you just doing loops around that training circuit. But they've got other things going on as well so they'll also there's also like a big stage which is used by a lot of manufacturers to, to it's like a, a proper test area and it's a it's and uh, it's a quality little stage it's quite scary there's big drops and it's like you've got to follow the line of grip and like sometimes they'll like be like a low camber uh, and then a big drop off but the the fastest line is right at the bottom of the camber, right on the sort of drop off. So you sort of you've got to commit to that line rather than like sort of safely. You'd want to be more towards the top, away from the drop. But the actual quickest line is is right at the edge of the drop. Uh, so fun. Uh, the guy who takes you around, John, he'll take you around. Um, first, you, that, this is in like a a, a four wheel drive Subaru. Um, so this is like not full spec it's not like a, a group n there's a group n car as well like they take it on a passenger ride but this is just like sort of your bog standard sort of beginner sort of novice rally car if you like uh, obviously roll cage and all that type of stuff but uh, it's not like it's not mega fast but it's it's quick enough um so we'll take it down he'll, he'll tell you how to look for racing lines he'll explain pace notes to you uh, all the rest of it um in and then you sort of back at, on your loops as well doing your sort of training loops so people are getting pulled away from the training loops just as it's going to go and do the uh the sort of um, the loop around the circuit where they'll explain uh and then in between this while i was doing because i was doing my bars i was in the classroom as well with a guy uh, I forget his name. Was his was he called John as well? I forget his name now. But he he gave me like two hours of tuition. But it wasn't just about the bars test. It was just it was like invaluable information um, of what it'll be like when I go to do my first events and stuff. So um, he's got a load of experience. He's you know he's been doing it a long long time, and he'll he, he's just giving you loads of tips, loads of advice. And then, like, but helping you with like a lot of the stuff that he's teaching you will be the questions and the bars test as well. So he's getting that, and you can sort of tell because he'll repeat something a couple of times, and you think to yourself, he's making sure I remember that. Um, so really well done. Uh, so that, like when it was my goal again to do a, a loop, I'd 
I go out of the classroom, go and do my loops, and then come back in and and crack on with like sort of the revision side of it. Um, so I didn't miss anything. Like I, even though I was doing my bars, I still managed to get the equal amount of goes as everybody else who was doing the rally experience. Um, so uh, I think it was after dinner. Um, you sort of stop for lunch, and after lunch you. Get a couple of more little videos, more informational videos, and then uh, you go out um, in the car, then actually on the stage. So you've already had a, a good amount of time uh, around a training loop, so you're a bit more confident by this time, and you feel a bit more you know, ready for it. Uh, then you go out on the stage, you follow um, the guy, John, his name is, you follow his uh, pace notes, and he'll push you. And he has got dual pedals and his own wheel as well, so we can get you out of trouble. Uh, so he really let you go for it. They really, really, really push you. Um, so it's not like they're not trying to hold you back at anything. You, they make you go quick because he knows he can pull himself out of anything. Any trouble that you get into, he, he can get out of it, um, which is it's great. It gives you the confidence. Now, I did hold back a little bit on it because this was part of my assessment um, for everybody else it was just for the enjoyment for me it was a it was a test it was the actual test um so i was a little bit worried of making a mistake and failing my test um so i, I did hold myself back a little bit more than what i probably would have liked to um it would have been nice to that to do the stage without the worry of the test on top of it yeah, but it was fine you know still went for it the guy was very complimentary um passed the test fine the only thing is the pace notes that they used i don't know if this is part of the bars but the pace notes like for, for all those who play rally games uh, a six is a fast corner a one tight you know sort of etc two three is all tight um they to use like a nine point system so a nine is fast and an eight is fast and a seven's like not quite as fast and a what um no i'll tell you that again see this is how confusing it is it's a one is fast and a two is fast and a three is slightly is fast but it, so it's like one two three four if you can see me wheel so when he's saying to me, because there's like blind crest and stuff, when he's saying to me, uh, uh, sort of to right over crest and you can't see it, my brain is telling me I need to slow down because I've got a to right coming up, which is going to be really tight. It's going to be like a square almost. Um, and it's not. It's flat out. So I, there was a couple of points like that where he was like, no go 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 and i'm like breaking thinking oh shit no i'm gonna fucking crash after this hill so i had to like try and reverse my brain for the test which was actually quite tricky to do that was the only the only sort of negative about it um yeah that that was a bit of a that was a bit of a mind fuck for me um so just be wary of wh when you go you, a one is going to be like a, 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 what we would call a six uh, the most of us anyway who play like you know the other the obvious games state rally and stuff like that um so the pace notes are reversed um which is strange so yeah that was done that was passed um back into the classroom still doing going out and doing my loops and stuff so um yeah back into the classroom a bit more tuition and then my test and he was like here's your test you know crack on with it in between thingy uh, so there's no like real time limit or not on uh, but the questions were so easy it was just a case uh, and it it was that ingrained into you from the tuition that the guy had taught that it was just like yeah tick 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 probably took me i'd say less than two minutes to actually do the test uh, probably about 10 or so questions the, the questions will be like um so some good tips for you make sure you know your your science your stage science um so you know what time and control is you know what the star flag looks like 
you know, what the flying finish looks like. So everything has got like a warning. Um, so yellow signs, excluding when you go into the, the stage, uh, like yellow signs will be a warning. So like the uh, checkered flag, uh, yellow is a warning that 50 to 100 meters away is going to be the flying finish and then the flying finish will be red uh, and then the countdown markers that you'll always see the three two one um the distance between them is they've got to be equal uh, it doesn't matter what distance they are as long as they're equal to each other uh, the minimum distance from a flying finish to the sort of stage stop at the end is 200 meters um what else uh, caution signs you need to know what that is you need to know what to what to do if there's a crash so so uh, if you come up oh red flag as well so if you see someone with a, a red flag on stage that means that you uh, slow down and be prepared to stop so you slow down and that's if there's any emergency vehicles for instance you stop and let them pass uh, if you come to a crashed car and um there's an SOS sign out, you need to stop and help. If there's an OK sign out, you just uh, go past them, but make, you need to make a note of where they are so you can tell at the end of the stage you have to say car nine because they'll be expecting car... Say, you, say car nine has crashed in your car 10, they'll be expecting car nine at the end, but car 10 turns up so you've got to say yeah we've just seen car 9 it was at junction 3 whatever uh, and he's okay uh, if there's a crashed car and there's no signs out you need to go out and uh, check on them because they might be in that much of a bad way that they can't put any signs out uh, yeah so just little things like that what else what other questions were there um, uh, Markins so when you see like the arrows, uh, you see like arrows coming up to a junction and stuff, there's normally a yellow one and then two red ones. So it might ask you how many arrows would be at a junction and the answer would be three. So it would be one yellow, which would be a 50 to 100 metre warning. Uh, and then the red, would be two sort of reds at a junction, pointing whatever way the junction is. Uh, and those are advisory, they don't, they're not um they don't have to be there it's they're just like a sort of advisory thing yeah and you only see them on like either junctions or severe pins in the road um what else uh, i can't think of any of the other questions now off the top of my head but what i'll do is i'll link uh the video oh yeah your time and control ones you might need to know as well so uh i think it's a like a lightning bolt was it like a lightning bolt is a radio control so uh, that's where you go to if there was an accident and you needed to get help you go to the radio control so there'll be a yellow which will be a 50 to 100 meter warning or 100 meter warning um, and then the blue sign would be the actual radio control itself uh, so if you were the second car at a scene the first car's assistant you jump ahead then and you go to the radio control and say you know these people need help uh what else what else what else uh, there's a few more but i say it's all pretty basic stuff um yeah it's all pretty basic stuff you might get i don't think i got asked this i can't remember if you drop your helmet what do you do you throw it away because you might have damaged it um yeah top of my head that that's all i can think of is at the minute but say i'll link the videos that i watched because they they were really helpful um uh yeah so that was that done got that passed uh a few more goes round the loop um then uh in between as well they're doing passengers so that this group n car that you see now you get taken out on that on a passenger ride and oh my fucking word what a fucking driver this guy john his name is man that's phil as well who owns the school uh, all really good guys 
but the passenger ride is like just mind blowing how quick he goes. It's like it's your, I can't get over how, how good it was. Um, yeah, so yeah, I highly recommend if you're gonna do it and you can get a full price rally school, you can afford it. I'd go there. I would definitely. Um, so that's pretty much it. I think, yeah. It's a couple of the at the end of the day there was some uh, timed loops that we done as well. So a uh, bit of a competition which uh, I did manage to win. I don't know if you can see that competition winner there. Yeah. It was it was the best. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, so aye, aye, it's hard, yeah. Um Yeah, so yeah, that was pretty much it. So we were there from like nine till half four. Finished at about half four. Uh, they load the time in the cars. I think because a lot of it was on the training loops, and you were just you. Most of the time, you're going out on your own. You're doing your laps, um, and you're sort of honing the skills in yourself. Like my 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 daughter. Whenever she done her lap, she asked most of the time for someone to come with her because she just wanted to she wanted that extra advice. So they're more than happy to jump in with you as well. Um Yeah, so yeah. Next up for me is there's the against the clock. So you sort of start and then you do like your loops. Yeah. yeah so next up for me is to save up for the car, I think. Or maybe try and find a package to start off with where someone hires a car out. Uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of websites going. A lot of them that I thought I might do, like there was one called Rally Me. Uh, they all seem to have, have stopped and have, don't operate anymore. So I'm finding it a bit tricky to find a complete package to just go out. My problem is time. Um, having a full time job, daughter, all the rest of it, uh, and I don't have like a garage or anything. The way my house is set, it's away from the road. So if I buy one, I've got nowhere to put it. I can't just leave it outside the house, or I haven't got a garage. So I need to maybe buy storage for the car. I've got a, possibly a couple of options, um, and I'll probably buy one that's already made. So maybe like a Peugeot 106 or a little Citroen Saxo. I've been looking at a few on eBay. But um, that's a bit battered already that I can get for cheap. But I might just need to update seats or harnesses or whatever. And that way it doesn't really matter if I wrap it around the tree. I don't want to spend years building one. That's your pride and joy. And then when you go out on the stages, you're scared to put your foot down because you don't want to break it. I'd rather buy something that I can break and go, ah, well, shit happens. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be the next, obviously. It's like December now. It's nearly Christmas. Uh, so <laughs> money is going to be tight. Uh, if anyone has the experience or has got any tips or advice or anything like that let us know because uh, it'd be much appreciated um yeah so hopefully this will be a series and uh, if i do buy a car or whatever i'll do another video and i'll sort of update the journey uh, i just hope i hope i get somewhere with it i hope it's not just the license and then that's it nothing happens of it uh, i hope hope i do get to actually get a car and get out on the stages so next off for me first actually i've got to send off for my license so i'll send off for my license it's meant to be a bit of a backlog i was told um but it doesn't really matter because i haven't got the money right now anyway um so in the meantime i'll send my license off start saving and hopefully get out there soon yeah uh, so i hope this video helps uh yeah, I hope it helps anyone who's maybe thinking the same thing. Just go and buy the pack. Yeah, just buy the pack and then you've got it then. And then it's there in front of you and it makes you want to do something with it. So just take one step at a time. Don't be thinking about the big picture. Oh, I need this. I need a card. I need this. I'm just going to I'm just gonna take it one step at a time um, and just see where it leads me and uh, go from there. Yeah, okay. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe to the video. 
and I'll see you on the next one. Yeah.